Hi everyone. So, so far we understood on, up, up until CH root and the issues with CH root. Now the next important topic that we have to discuss is a namespace called PID. Now, this picture depicts how a PID within a container is mapped to the host, OS and vice versa. Now, if you look at this whole scheme of things, what you can notice is there are two container namespaces or con two container processes running. One I'll say container namespace one, or I'll can say container namespace, container process one, another one will be container namespace two. Now, the host OS has a complete view of each and every process that gets spawned off on the host machine. Now, if you look at the current diagram, what you can notice is the host OS has got one as the init process and two as the shell process as it is with most of the Unix systems. But there are local services running within the container namespace, which is a shell and a user program. I may call it my service. Now, the catch here is within the container namespace, the shell and the user program have got the IDs as 0 and 1 respectively. Whereas at the host OS level, where the host has complete view of each and every process that gets spawned off, sees the zero shell program within the container namespace one as having a PID of 10001, whereas a service running locally within the container will be seen as a service 100117. Uh, service with PID 10017. Now the, another interesting aspect that you have to notice here is the container namespace 2 also has similar programs but instead of two programs that are, in, that are running within namespace 1 there are three processes running within namespace 2 and the IDs are more or less similar so you know 0 is the ID of the shell program whereas the user program has got a process ID of 1 and MySQL which probably is a service running within that container has a process ID of 2. Now if you look at the, the host machine, the host machine has a complete view of the processes running within namespace 2 also, as well but the process IDs are on different on the host machine. So this is what is meant by you know a PID namespace. So what the container runtime is doing is it is giving an independent isolated process tree for each of the container namespaces. Now one thing that you would have probably seen here or noticed here is both the containers have the shell program 0 running as the first process and the user programs running as process 1 and it is quite apparent that user program 1 has been for user program with process ID 1 has been forked out of the shell with the process ID of 0. So if you don't know what fork is, what Unix systems actually do is, you know, when you type, let's say, ls minus l on your command prompt, the shell actually makes a copy of itself. And next step that it does is it does something called exec. So it, the fork program is a complete replica of the four program is made and you then overlay the ls process running uh, ls process that is available in slash bin folder on top of the the fork forked program which you have created now there's a concept of copy or write on the fork so in order to make the things fast uh, what the unix operating system actually does is only if the fork program sees, the, I mean, the, there's a, when a system forks itself, there's a parent program which actually starts the fork, fork progress and the, there's a child process which gets created as part of the fork process. Now, what happens is if the child program has to be made an exact replica of the parent program, it's, it's time intensive, it's CPU intensive. So, 
what fork actually does is it makes a quick copy of the a copy of itself and only when there are there are changes desired in the child process that is when you know it does generates a page fault and creates the actual content dynamically so this is how a unique system works and the process is more or less same in the case of containers as well thank you for listening